money and personal finance is usually thought of as a numbers thing, a math thing, no behavior required. In fact, keep your emotions out of it and just follow the numbers. That sounds nice, but in reality, if you've had money and dealt with money, you've realized that success with money is predicated more on your behavior, more on your psychology. And so today's book and the 52 book challenge is the psychology of money. Morgan Housel. This is a reread for me, book number four of 52 this year. And of course, you can join me on the challenge. Check out the link below or in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast on details of the challenge. And if you want to see my reading list for this year as I'm updating it, go to grahamcochran.com slash 52 books. Just a, it's just a list. That's it. There's no opt-in. There's nothing there. Um, this is a reread because this is arguably one of the best books on money I've ever read. And I've probably read over 100 books on money and investing over the last 18 years since I've gotten into this stuff when I first got married. There's too much to unpack in this book because it's really like 19 short concepts as opposed to one large concept. But what I wanted to do is pull out two key ideas from this book that he is spot on and I think apply to us, especially if you're a business owner. Um, let's jump right in. Page 83 in chapter seven, he says, the highest form of wealth is the ability to wake up every morning and say, I can do whatever I want today. Full stop. You can't argue with this. This is the ultimate freedom, choice. We think of this in terms of, oh, when I retire one day, I'll have an income saved up or a pension or something so that therefore I can do whatever I want each day. The great news about this is you can actually get this freedom a lot sooner. Um, I love how he says it here. More than your salary, more than the size of your house, more than the prestige of your job, control over doing what you want, when you want to, with the people you want to, is the broadest lifestyle variable that makes people happy. He goes on to say, a small amount of wealth means the ability to take a few days off work when you're sick without breaking the bank. And not everybody has that. I understand that. But if you have some money in the bank where you could stay home sick and you can still pay the bills, that is wealth to a small degree. Gaining that ability is huge if you don't have it. A bit more means waiting for a good job to come around after you get laid off rather than having to take the first one you find. That can be life-changing. Put this in entrepreneur terms, a little bit more wealth in the bank means you don't have to take every client or do every tactic or launch every launch that you don't want to do because you have a little bit of money in the bank. Six months emergency expenses meanings, means not being terrified of your boss. Now I'm paraphrasing, if the economy turns bad or your funnel's no longer performing, the algorithm doesn't send you the traffic you want. He goes on and on and on. Using your money to buy time and options has a lifestyle benefit few luxury goods can compete with. And I can't disagree there. This is why I want to own my own business and a specific type of business, a life-giving business. I don't want to run a restaurant or run a business that requires me to work 50 to 60 hours a week. That, that defeats the purpose of what I want. I want my time. I want freedom. And that comes from me having an income that comes in pretty passively uh, and money in the bank and investment. So that's the point to me of having wealth is to have freedom. The other thing he says, and I love this, and we'll kind of stop here, is wealth is what you don't see. By definition, wealth is what you don't see. If you see someone driving a $100,000 car, this is what Morgan talks about, the only thing you know about that person is that they no longer have $100,000 or they have taken on $100,000 of debt. We have no idea if they're actually wealthy. All we can tell is that they are $100,000 less wealthy than they were before. So when we think we want to be wealthy, a lot of times we're thinking about the things we could buy or the trips we could take or the level of hotel or Airbnb we could stay in or which seat on the airplane we're flying in. But all that means is that you've spent money. Now, in theory, you might have an income to support that purchase or you might have debt that no one sees to support that purchase, but none of that means you're wealthy. Wealth is really what nobody sees. It's largely invisible. It's the stock brokerage account that you have with $800,000 in it that no one can see. It's the house that you have that has equity in it. There's the college fund that you have. There's the private equity deal that you're doing. There's all kinds of, it's the business that you own that's making money that actually has intrinsic value because you could sell it. It's what you don't see. And so 
I love how Morgan breaks down in this book really what makes people happy, really how to become a great investor. He studies the greatest investors of them all, and you start to realize that it's not smarts that makes you win with money. It's understanding your own psychology and human behavior, and it's a lot like running a business. The smartest, most talented person is not going to have the most successful business. I am not the smartest person. I'm not the most talented entrepreneur, but I've had two successful seven-figure businesses largely because of my psychology. I show up every single day and I do the right things over and over again, even if I don't feel like it. And I don't react to the economy and flip out. I don't flip out when things change. I'm flexible. I'm willing to pivot if need be, but I don't make knee-jerk decisions. Slow and steady wins the race, not only in business, but in money as well. So if you haven't read a book on money in a while, this is an easy one because it's fun, it's approachable, and it'll encourage you. And as his first chapter says, no one's crazy. So you will feel welcome to the table. You won't feel like you're the crazy person with a bad money story. We all have a jacked up money story. But I think there's a reason why this, I think, was the number one best-selling book on Amazon 2022. Uh, it's caught on because it's one of the few money books that actually helps us understand ourselves and makes you feel like, I can do this. So Psychology of Money, Morgan Housel. Can't recommend it enough. It's so good. I had to read it again. I knew I was going to put it on the list. And I learned even new things and underlined even more things that I wanted to tell you about today, but we don't have time. So that is my micro review of the psychology of money. Make sure you join me on the 52 book challenge. You don't have to do 52 books. It's okay. Do a book every two weeks. That'd be 24 books in a year. Do a book a month. That's amazing. Still better than the average US adult. Just make a list of books you really want to read in a few different categories so that you grow. So this is a year of growth for you. And then let me know what books you're reading next, what books you've enjoyed so far this year. And if you want to check out more about the 52 book challenge, I'm going to link to that episode below as well. So you can see the genesis of that idea. Have an amazing weekend. We'll see you on next week's book review as we continue down this journey of reading 52 books in a year. 